Hey everyone, all right, so here we are, 11th consecutive green day, over $6,500 of profit this morning. Less than an hour of trading, over $6,000, that is amazing. I am happy with that. It is the best day so far of the year, sixth day of the year, and uh, right now I'm averaging just under $2,000 a day, which means I'm on track for another half million dollar a year, but I won't count my eggs before they hatch. Um, we've still got uh, a good ways to go, but this is a great start. I love having that nice big win. It gives me a cushion for the month of January, and the fact is, we saw a couple stocks make some huge moves today, and that really uh, gives me a good, a good amount of confidence that we're gonna start to see some momentum pick up here in January. So anyways, good day. I'll break it down in the recap as usual. Any questions, any comments, leave them below, and I'll come back through and answer them later this afternoon. All right, see you guys first thing tomorrow morning. All right, so we're gonna do our uh, midday market recap here. Today is uh, my 11th consecutive green day. And finally, I got uh, more than just a base hit, finishing the day up $6,535.13. So I'm gonna write in the calendar, make it official, $6,535.13 on uh, the sixth day of the year and my 11th consecutive green day. It's pretty good. Um, you know, as good as it is, um, my last trade was a red trade, and so I'm left kind of feeling like, hmm, this could have been a better day if I hadn't lost $2,300 on my last trade. You know, I was up almost 9,000, and then, uh, you know, gave back 2,300. You know, that's, that's just the way it goes. Um, you're not gonna get up nine or 10,000 on the day without being aggressive and being aggressive puts you at risk of having, um, you know, a $2,300 loss. It's good that my green trades exceed the size of the red trade, but that is, um, you know, a little bit of a, a bigger loss than I typically like. So kind of, you know, a little disappointed there. I think I could have done a little bit better today. Um, I also had an issue with not having enough buying power on my first trade on CLPS. Um, that is a stock that is uh, I cannot use my margin on. So, you know, that is a little disappointing. So if I look at my account balance here, um, I took money out at the beginning of the year. So this morning I had $46,000 in the account. I started the year with about 40000 in the account, uh, which is a smaller account than I'm used to. I mean, I usually recently have been keeping the balance a little higher um, so I can take 10, 15, even 20,000 shares if I want to. Uh, but decided to take money out at the end of the year and dropped it down to 40. So I'd be starting the year with a little bit of a more realistic um, you know, amount or maybe an amount more similar to a lot of you guys. And yeah, so that ended up being a little bit of an issue on CLPS. But you know, making 6,500 today, that'll put me up over $50,000 uh, tomorrow. So the account is growing and it, this won't be a problem for very long. All right, so let's start by looking at the watch list. Today, uh, no different from any other day. It starts by going over the gap scanner. Looking at a historical scan here for 9.25 a.m., uh, what you'll see is that, again, we didn't have a lot that looked really good. ATOS was on here, gapping up 41%, but you know, as soon as the bell rang, it ended up selling off, uh, being kind of choppy. It did surge back up, but then drop back down, came back up, drop back down. Uh, you know, I just didn't end up feeling good on it. In total, it's only moved about 30 cents today from the very bottom to the very top. So it's not actually been that volatile. I mean, it's a, yeah, it's a $1.60 stock, so 30 cents is 20%, but um, in terms of cents per share, it hasn't moved all that much. So ATOS, I didn't trade, um, ANFI too cheap, go, go. Floats too high, TGI too expensive. CEI, we pulled that one up. However, on this one, uh, unfortunately, you know, it had sold off a little bit before the bell. And so I just, you know, I was like, well, maybe over $1.40, but by the time the bell was ringing, it ended up being pretty crowded and I just left it alone. So no trades on that one. So no, no, no. No, 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 too expensive, too expensive, floats too high. SAEX, we pulled it up, um, 
And on this one, I just thought pre-market, nah, there's no volume. I'm just gonna leave it alone. Skipped it, went to the next one. No, 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 no. So I didn't have much on my gap scanner that I was really excited about. SAEX, I wasn't even watching. I didn't even have it on uh, one of the charts that I was looking at. I really didn't think it was it was even worth it. Now it ended up being my biggest winner and that was a surprise. Um, so the bell rings and I'm really not seriously looking at anything for gappers. However, we were watching uh, a couple of stocks that were strong yesterday. CLPS uh, yesterday made a really impressive move. I mean, this stock went from $4 to $8 yesterday afternoon. It took off. I mean, this was impressive. Um, I didn't trade it. I was in one-on-one um, -on -one sessions with uh, some of my inner circle students. So we were, we were talking about it and watching it. Uh, it was on very light volume, but it just totally took off. Squeezed all the way up to 833, came back down to six, popped back up to 750. And so I said, you know what? Let's keep it on watch today. Uh, so let me pull, let me go in here and I'm going to remove all of these lines and then I'm going to draw them back on so you can see what I was looking at this morning. Okay, so this morning I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, all right, this is what it did yesterday. I'm going to draw a trend line from the high down to that line right there. All right, so this is a descending resistance line and I'm just kind of seeing, are we above it or below it? And we were kind of above it pre-market right around here you know, staying above it. And then I said, okay, well, what are some levels looking to the left that are interesting? There's 690. Here's another one at 710 left and up. Here's another one at 751, 750, and around 833 high of day yesterday. So those are the levels that I was kind of watching. All right, now the bell rings and initially, uh, you know, in the five minute chart, it actually dipped down for a second. So it dipped down. I had it on watch as a possibility. And as it broke over 620, it ripped up from 620 right up to 694. That is a really nice move. Now, I wanted to get in it as quickly as I could. My first entry was 638, 649, and 688. I mean, I was buying it pretty, you know, I was buying like into that squeeze. Um, I mean, I really thought this had a lot of potential. So when I pull up, um, this is my Sterling trading platform. It's connected to Lightspeed. My username here is LSR Cameron. Um, this is my Lightspeed platform. This is my uh, IRA account right here. So when I type in CLPS in Lightspeed, it shows 100% right here. And that means I cannot use any margin to take the trade. They've restricted it to trading based on your cash balance only because of how volatile it was yesterday. Now, in fact, several stocks are restricted here. CTXR is restricted. Um, well, this is the same one twice. Let's look at um, SAEX. This one's also restricted, interesting. Um, let's look at OPGN. OPGN is restricted, and that's not uncommon. I mean, the, the thing here is that these are very volatile stocks. A stock like Facebook, you can use your margin. 25% is all you have to put down, so you can use four times buying power. The thing is, most of us end up having at least $25,000 uh, because that's the PDT minimum. So $25,000 you know, on a $2 stock or a $3 stock like SAEX, you can still take 8,000 shares of it. You, know, you can still be pretty aggressive. Um, so... Uh, yeah, yeah. So anyways, um, now I can't actually use margin in my IRA, but it still shows whether it's available. So on CLPS, I jump in 638 and 649, boom, boom. And uh, then I, I actually got a, a, a notice, an error message saying not enough buying power. And I was like, no, because I want to be buying more. I want to be buying 10,000 shares of this because I think it's going to move to $7 but I could only add another thousand. So using my hotkey shift one, the, I was getting this error. So I added another thousand shares at 88 and that was on this one minute micro pullback. So it pops up to 94, it pulls back for a second down to 50, but I, I wasn't really worried because I pretty much knew the first one minute pullback would get bought up because of how strong this one was yesterday.
I had like 99% conviction in it. So I held my position. It then pops up right here to 718, and that's where I was selling 699, 685, 704, uh, and then I sold the rest as it came back down. So I made 2,600 bucks on it, which is good, um, but I was restricted because of my the buying power issue. And you know what good is the money doing sitting in my checking account? Now I took it out. Um, you know, it, I really would have been better off just leaving the money in here. This probably would have been more than a ten thousand dollar day if I'd left that money in there. But you know, it is what it is. So I, I you know, I, I want to start the year with a little bit of a smaller account, and that's fine. So um, I'll it'll you know this won't be an issue for too long. But anyways, so that was an issue on CLPS. So that was the only trade I took. Uh, I was watching it through here for possible, um, you know, next leg up, but it ended up selling off and just sort of drifting lower. So only got one opportunity there. And now over the next few days, we can watch to see if it flags and consolidates, and then maybe it'll give us another move up towards $8. So the next one, um, all of a sudden, you know, we're sitting here just watching the scanners. There's CLPS, CLPS, and SAEX hits at 273. I see it and I'm like, well, that's weird. You know, I, I don't know, um, not sure about it, but it hits again at two, uh, I, or I pull it up 273 or whatever it was when it hit. And I see it's ripping up fast, 273, 278, 279, 280. Uh, it looks like here it didn't hit again on this scanner. So I went ahead and jumped in here, 290. 3,000 share order, only got filled uh, 1,200 shares. And remember, I was pressing shift one to buy five cents above the ask, and I still only got a partial fill. I add at three, I add more at 306. I try to add going into the hall. I'm looking at this and I'm thinking this thing is gonna you know, take off. I don't get filled anything going into the hall. So I had 7,500 shares, basically, 7,200. All right, coming out of the hall, I add more. I had 9,000 shares coming out of the halt. So this is actually interesting because I definitely was using my margin on this one. Even though it says here it's not marginable, um, I was clearly using margin to take that many shares. Um, so I don't know, maybe that that changed during the day. I guess I'm not really sure. But in any case, um, so now I'm in it with like 15,000 shares and I'm trying to scalp the move up to $4, even thinking maybe it'll go into a second halt. This daily chart, it's got lots of room. And by adding up here this 9,000 shares, this is aggressive. However, I'm in with 7,000 shares at $3, and now I'm adding 9,000 shares at 370. So what's my cost basis? You know, it's like 340. So now I've got 15,000 shares or 16,000 shares, but my average cost is 340. And as of that moment, I'm up, you know, 40 cents per share. So what I'm really risking is that the 7,500 shares that I bought at three, I could go ahead and sell them at 370 for a profit. Because if it comes back down to 340, I'm gonna have to stop out of the full 16,000 share position, break even. So basically the risk on this was risking not realizing the profit from my first entry. But that's to me kind of okay because I'm not actually risking any profit. I'm not risking I'm not risking actual loss. Worst case scenario, I sell break even. Best case scenario, I've got an average of 340 with 16,000 shares. I sell it at 420 or 430 for a 14 to 15,000 dollar winner with zero risk right? Because now my stop is break even. So this is definitely being aggressive because, you know, I, I'm, I'm choosing not to sell the 7,500 shares that I have from three. I'm choosing to add, but I think this was the right one to do it on given the fact that this has a history back here of being a former runner. Here's a day where it went from $8 to 30 bucks. I knew that. And that's why I was so aggressive on it because I knew this had that potential. I didn't know if it would happen, but it had that potential for a home run. So I stepped up to the plate a little bit on this one. It ends up hitting 405, dropping down to 60, down to 62, kind of doing a little bit of a false breakout right in this area. And so I get out of the position through here. So I end up selling it in the 80s and 70s. And I guess my ad at 80 wasn't really a good one. 
I added a little bit more back after selling at 95. It didn't break over four, sold at 97, added back at 89, sold it for at 93, you know, kept kind of trying it, added one more time at 90 and 93, sold at 402, 405, you know, and, and that was uh, the total of $6,228 of profit. So I took another trade on it right in here. You know, I, and then of course it sold off and then ripped all the way back up to the highs. <laughs> so, you know, if I, there's no way I would have just held it. That would not be smart. You don't hold something with 16,000 shares at 340 and let it go down 40 cents against you, which is what it did here. So I did the right thing by getting out. I didn't get back in here as it broke back over the VWAP. I could have and maybe should have, but by that time I was feeling like I was licking my wounds a little bit from the OPGN trade. So OPGN hits the scanners um, next, and there were a couple others that hit the scanner. You can see ANY hit the scans. Um, this one I, I was sort of into, but just didn't end up taking any trades on it. Uh, GSUM hit the scanner, didn't take a trade on that one. ATOS ends up getting up higher. GBR pops up. The daily chart on this one, I didn't, even though it's a former runner, the last few times it's popped up, it's failed. So I wasn't as interested in that one. Uh, and then uh, TGC was a little too cheap, I'm not as into that one. And then we had uh, DFFN, didn't really trust it. You know, it had been red the last time it popped up on this day right here. So I left that one alone. And then OPGN pops up. And initially I'm like, ah, I don't care about it. 67, 70, I'm like, no, nah, this thing's stupid. It's, you know, cheap, I don't trust it. But then it goes to 80, 85, 90, 95. And now I'm seeing that it's about to get halted. I see the halt level showing up on it. And so I'm like, all right, I'll, I'm gonna take a stab. So I jump in it at 90. And before I know it, I'm in it with 15,000 shares. You know, I'm stepping up again, pretty aggressively. It, it looks like it's going into a halt. It gets halted at 203 and I've got 15,000 shares at uh, 95. Now, again, at this point, I am risking a potential you know, well, $2,300, which is what I lost on it. Uh, back of my mind target is that this has room up to $2.50, which is a 200 moving average. So that's $7,500 of profit, roughly. And that was kind of my back of the mind um, profit target. So it ends up, um, you know, hitting a high of 203, resuming from the halt and dropping down to 183. I gave it a second to do a one minute micro pullback and then go break back over two. Uh, which oftentimes will happen. And as it broke here, 83, I was like, nope, gotta uh, take that loss. Sold it at 80, sold half at 80 and the other half at 77. So, you know, boom, 2,300 bucks in the red. And I went from having a nearly $9,000 day to being up only 6,500, only 6,500. I mean, all things considered, this was still a good day. Three trades, uh, you know, some really good winners, but one loss on OPGN. And, um, you know, I'm not gonna beat myself up too much for it because the reality is I'm still uh, very green on the day. It's been the best day of the year. And being aggressive is what gave me $6,200 on SAEX. If I was conservative on this, I might've only made 3,000. You know, if I was more conservative on CLPS, I probably would've only made 1,500. So if I was conservative all day today, I probably wouldn't have taken this trade at all, or maybe I would have taken it with small size, but I would have taken both of these with small size as well. So I probably in total would have been up, you know, maybe 2,000 plus 3,000 is 5,000. Plus I would have taken smaller size on this, but still lost on it. So I might've only lost 600. So I'd probably, if I was conservative today, only made like 40, $4,500. And instead I made 6,500 with the potential, if a couple of these trades worked better, to have had a $15,000, $20,000 day. So I think, you know, based on all that, I made the right move by being aggressive. Uh, it worked well on two of the trades and it hurt a little bit on the last one, but you know, that's, that's the way it goes. You're, not, you're never gonna be 100% accurate. You've gotta be willing to, um, you know, take some of those um, risks and be okay with them, you know, giving you a little bit of a loss. It's all about winning more than you lose and having your winners be bigger than your losers. This will be the biggest loser that I've had in probably like three or four weeks. But 
this was a day where I was stepping up to the plate and being a little bit more aggressive. So, you know, I really, I want to have smaller losses in 2019, but at the same time, um, 2,300 is not the end of the world in terms of a huge loss, number one. And number two, you know, I'm, uh, if I want to have smaller losses, I also have to weigh that against, you know, I still have a goal of making half a million dollars this year. So that means I need to be averaging $2,000 per day. Today is my fifth day of, uh, sixth day of 2019. One, two, three, four, five, six trading day of 2019. And I'm up um, just around like 11 or thousand or so dollars. So I'm averaging actually just under 2,000 a day. Uh, and before today, I was averaging well under 2,000 a day. So this, this helped me catch up. You know, this caught me up quite a bit. Uh, but it's because I was aggressive. You know, I've got to be willing to step up to the plate if I want to have those big profits. So, you know, I'm, I'm not going to beat myself up for having a little bit of a loss um, on OPGN. Green is good. $6,500 is fantastic. And, you know, SAEX, I like seeing that it's still moving up. 6.6 .6 million shares of volume now. Uh, it's breaking over the 50 moving average on the daily or just about. Yeah, I guess it's over it now. So, you know, we'll see what happens with this one today. I'll keep it on watch. Um, I do have um, some one-on-one -on -one sessions with Inner Circle students uh, later this afternoon. So I'm not sure that I'll, I, I don't think I would trade. It's probably giving into FOMO to try to go back at it and try to get myself back up to 10,000, you know, and make back this loss. Statistically, I know I do the best trading in the first hour and a half of the day. So, you know, I, I, I don't know. I mean, if it, if it got halted on another circuit breaker, that would be probably the time I would start to be a little interested. Yesterday, um, CLPS getting halted on circuit breakers in the late uh, morning or early afternoon is certainly something that was attracting my attention. But, um, you know, at the same time, the spreads were pretty big. I think the risk would have been pretty high to jump into it. And I think in that case, just waiting to short the reversal is probably safer if you were able to find shares to borrow. Uh, but I don't know how easy that, that would have been. So anyways, um, you know, a green day, 6,500 bucks. It's not going to, well, it's the best day of the year. It's not the best day of all time. Um, and, you know, it's, it could have been a little better if SAEX had broken over four, if CLPS had actually continued um, saw a true continuation and broken yesterday's high of 833. That would have been amazing. Um, and if OPGN had squeezed up to that 50, uh, to that uh, 250 spot at the 200 moving average, this would have been a much better day. But, you know, starting to get a little traction here, a little momentum, definitely seeing more volatility yesterday afternoon uh, and today than we've seen in the last couple of weeks. So maybe this is... Um, you know, uh, kind of indicator that the tide is is changing. So for those of you guys that um, traded these stocks today, you know, if you're trade if you traded any of them, like if you're red on SAEX or you're red on CLPS, um, look at your entries compared to mine. What did you do differently? Um, my OPGN trade is a loss, but you could also compare your entries. I probably could, I could have sold it faster um, as soon as it didn't open higher out of the halt. I could have just said, oh, no, I'm getting out of this thing right now at, at 90. And I would have only lost like 750 bucks. But, you know, it flashed down to 83. I wanted to give it a second to do a one minute micro pullback. And I had enough of a cushion on the day to give it that room. So uh, maybe your stop on this was even tighter than mine and the loss would have been smaller. But yeah, so that's it for me. Um, hope, hopefully you guys had a decent day and we'll be back at it. First thing tomorrow, hopefully we'll have uh, another green day will be the 12th consecutive green day if we can do it again tomorrow. All right, everyone. So I will see you uh, first thing tomorrow morning. Hope you guys have a great afternoon. Bye, everyone. If you're still watching, you must have really enjoyed that video. So why not subscribe and get email alerts anytime I upload new content? Remember, when you subscribe, you become a member of the Warrior Trading family.